This is an Adam Schaff, or is it Schaff, uh, upright piano built in 1921. Uh, marketed at the time, they called it a grand. Technically, it's not a grand piano, but at that time, they called it a upright grand because it's 52 inches high, which is a fairly tall upright. Uh, this is 60 inches wide and 30 inches deep. Anyways, the serial number over here shows it's built 1921, and this has got a player piano mechanism on it here. Uh, revolves around. It's got four set, three sets of valves. It's got six different uh, bellows that drive it over here. This particular piano went under water in Katrina, so it's got some issues. The water came up about two, two and a half feet in this room, so the entire keyboard went underneath water. So you can still see over here I'm pulling out marsh grass. You can keep on vacuuming and vacuuming and vacuuming and you get uh, marsh grass coming out. So I've got this disassembled trying to get the keys off uh, to get up underneath there. Um, it's kind of a massive project. This particular unit has a serial number over here too, which is the 558,000 so it's built in 1921. The key numbers are shown on here 1 through 88. This has got 88 keys. Anyways, to try to get these keys out of here, the pins on this are rusted in place. So this is kind of a real challenge to try to get this out of here. I just experimented on one of these keys, it's way off to the edge, and the pin on here is totally rusted, so I'm going to have to go ahead and do some soul search and try to get these things out of here. Uh, the pin is supposed to be stuck down in here, and I just basically after a couple of years of goofing around with this thing, decided to try to get the keys out because i got to get up under here and clean it all out. Uh, I've been told by most people to go ahead and scrap this, but it's so old and so funky. We've had it in the family. It's kind of a fun thing to play with. <laughs> Got some dead keys here. Like that guy sticks. That's because it's got some junk under there. That's got some stuff underneath it. Going underwater is not bad, it's kind of bizarre. The thing actually still works, but basically we had all sorts of marsh grass and junk. Went up underneath here, and I keep on digging more and more stuff out. Here's where the pedals are. Pedals fall down like this. Actually, it's what's bizarre is the pedals still work and the bellows, one of the valves in there I've got to replace on there so it doesn't pump very well and uh, if you ever get anybody to work on these sometimes they don't really know what they're doing there was a bellows on here years ago 40 years ago uh, that when you let the pedals down it prevented it from crashing into the wood floor like that and we had a guy one time when I came back and visited the house when my folks were around, the, uh, he removed the bellows because he didn't know what it was for and it turns out the bellows was a damper to prevent the pedals from crashing. And since he didn't know what it was for, he removed it and this is fairly typical on some guys. I don't really work on pianos for a living or anything but it's kind of strange when somebody doesn't know what they're for uh, item is on a piano and because they don't know what it is they remove it and we've had that happen several times um, when this piano was bought in the mid 60s uh, it had tax on all the hammers here so it had kind of a barroom 
uh, funky tack sound. I put a tack on here just to play around with. So it sounded like that. And later on, when I wasn't living here, uh, my folks had some guy that he thought it was an abomination to have tacks on there, which I guess a purist is. So he put this goofy gizmo in that look, makes it look like tacks. And uh, that's a gizmo that goes through when it comes down and uh, puts a set of tacks down in here on a little bar. That doesn't work worth a crap, to be blunt. It's kind of hokey. I'm going to probably remove it. Um, but that's what happens and things like that. On this piano here, it's got a lot of cool things on it. On the uh, tracking, this is a set of bellows on the side, which is for tracking. And what it does is, when the roll is in here, um, it goes through. Here's how a roll goes in. You put a roll in here. The roll gets pulled down. But anyways, the side of this piece here on the roll, when the paper is going through, these two little gizmos look at the edge of the paper. And they actually have valves. They're right back in there. It'll open up when this edge scoots over too much. And there's one over here on the right side. So when the paper goes through and it bumps up against this little lever, it opens up a valve. Well, anyways, those two valves go to a balance mechanism that moves this a uh, gizmo here that moves the roll around. So it's a closed loop servo system on the uh, tracking. And what it does is it goes through and moves the uh, tracking on it. So if the paper tends to get off, this set of bellows has got a balance system that moves back and forth like this and moves the roll to centered on the holes. Uh, when you start a roll here, this thing here actually goes through and centers the bar. This mechanism that goes through here sets the rolls on the bar, so if it's off a little bit, you can move this bias adjustment here and set it on a, uh, move the tracking bar over. But what they do is the tracking bar here in this unit is fixed once you lock it in the set of holes and then the closed loop servo goes through here and moves the roll back and forth based on the feedback of the bleed air on the left and the right side here of the valves. And I think then there's another gizmo over here. There's a pedal control. Um, this hole here is a loudness hole. And what this does is on the player piano set of holes if you get on a hole here on the side, it basically um, has a deal that has opens up the loudness pedal. So this very large hole on the um, left side goes through and corresponds to a hole on the roll that opens up the loudness. Uh, this is the tempo, which is the speed. You move back and forth. It goes through a lever here on the front which is tempo for the speed and this number here corresponds very roughly with the tempo up here it says 70. Take that with a grain of salt. Everybody who plays these things wants to go at a different speed. This is the forward reverse switch which moves up here on the mechanism. Um, there's a lot of other cool things on here. There's loudness controls here besides the pedals on the bottom. And there's a silent thing that makes it silent here. There's a lot of cool little trick features on this machine here. But 
we actually had a guy that about 35 years ago came by and looked at this that wanted to remove this too because he didn't know what it was that's really sad but uh, this is kind of a funky thing though that uh, you got to get it set up right to track the rolls um, the individually these holes on the disc on the uh, disc on the on the uh, player piano roll line up with each hole on the vacuum so if this bar senses an open hole what it does it corresponds it goes to one of these uh, air solenoids basically if you want to call it that I'm not sure what the correct term is but each key has a striker on here manually drives uh, through pneumatics vacuum the hole on one of these corresponds to each hole which drives the key. So that's kind of cool. Anyways, this is a project machine. And you still got a lot of junk on here. Um, this whole room where this piano is got filled up with marsh grass. I've probably taken out several gallons of grass out of this thing and uh, it's just a ever-ending project there's a lot of junk that's under here originally on this machine we had um, this had lead um, tubing and that was back I want to say when it was built in 1921 and um, later on when we, we bought this machine used around 65 in uh, I think from the Newburgh Country Store near Evansville, Indiana, Newburgh, Indiana, for $500 around 1966, I think. And the fellow we bought it from replaced this with rubber tubes. And I think it's been replaced maybe once. I'm not sure about that. But um, anyways, they call this an upright grand. I'm sure that'll make people cringe. Um, that was a marketing term used in the 1920s. It's an atom shaft, or is it an atom shaft? Maybe somebody can fill me in. Built in 1921. It's a pretty tall machine. It's about 52 inches tall, so it's got a very strong, um, huge board. It's really super heavy. And this is one of the restoration projects I've got going to keep me busy. Here's showing my current dilemma here. I've got to get these keys off sometime. And there's only so much you can do with the old uh, Electrolux over here. One of them vacuuming. You can sit here and vacuum forever to try to get stuff off. But I've got to get these pivots off, um, get in here, and uh, pull those out of there so I can go and clean up under there. When we first got this machine, rebuilt I mean we got this in 65 it all looked cosmetically good on the inside and then we had a we took it actually took all these keys off at one time and the entire thing was filled with confetti basically all the punch outs and scraps off the player piano rolls with time dropped down in here and it had probably a half a gallon of just junk down in here and so the keys get kind of uh the action gets to be like this like it'll stick and it turns out you've got little punch outs and little pieces of scraps will fall down and get down in here you know besides just normal dirt and things so um, i don't know if these are ivory or plastic or what they all kind of have a different look to it but since this was real wood the uh, actually it doesn't look that bad if even if this thing went underneath the water because you can wipe it off get dirt out of it anything that's brass went underwater in Katrina usually you can clean up steel is kind of iffy it'll tend to rust what's kind of amazing is this music wire wires still sound a lot of them sound okay there's a little bit of mistuning here it needs to be tuned up but that's a whole nother project 
Um, anyways, this is the restoration project I got going on with Adam Schaff, Schaff 1921 uh, player piano. This is an ongoing project.